We do this too, uh, Brian. We clear the air. <laughs> you have to clear Plans the demons. Clear the negative clear energy. energy. The demons. All right, here we go. Three, two. Yeah, but yeah, let's let's move to the offensive line. Let, we'll stay in the trenches to to uh, start to start the inside out. I like the defensive it. part of the ball. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, where do you, I mean, geez, well, I mean, I think that the offensive line has obviously been a focal point and something that everyone's been talking about just because of we're getting AVT back after his tricep injury and, you know, we'll get into Becton a little bit, um, you know, Dwayne Brown and Lakin Tomlinson and I love Max Mitchell and uh, the versatility of some of the guys in the offensive line is super exciting. I mean, if, if, if this line stays healthy, you know, brought back uh, our center McGovern and man, they, I mean, this could, this could. They, they built a wall for Rogers. The question mark mm -hmm. is, um, is it going to be healthy? And is Becton going to be the athlete that we thought he was his freshman year? So, I mean, where, where do you all feel? I mean, like, what's like, what's your overall feeling of kind of where we stand offensively on the line? This is another case of Joe Douglas, not necessarily drafting. We need a tackle. We absolutely, he drafted the best lineman who was available yeah, I think, I think I one, it. I, if you're not a, if you're a Senator and you don't have a mullet and a beard, <laughs> like, honestly, what are we doing? Yeah, Cowboy has. But he's <laughs> going back to before he's an athletic freak. He can, he's one of the, he's a similar to like Jason Kelsey who can pull out of center. Um, and last year we were not deep on the offensive line at all. We had four AVT playing four positions in five games, you know? Yeah. Um, what a what a detriment. That being said, I think that offensive line might be the deepest on the team right now, like deepest position group. All right. We, we re-signed Connor McGovern. Yep. We draft, a, we draft a center. And both of them can, can and have played guard. Played guard, yeah. Uh, AVT coming back. Hopefully, Lincoln Tomlinson is Lincoln Tomlinson and not just a stone gargoyle yeah. this year. Um, and then we have four or five tackles, most of whom can play multiple Mitchell, sides. Right, we got Mitchell, uh, Brown, Turner, Becton. Uh, yes. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I, dude, I'm, yeah. I, like you said, I think it's, I think it's our, it's, I don't know if deepest, but definitely like our most versatile, right? Like you have yeah. guys who can play multiple, multiple positions. Obviously that is a philosophy of Douglas, right? Drafting guys who can play multiple spots. And it's probably a good idea because I can't remember the last time we've had a starting offensive line for more than three games, like the same starting offensive line it's, it's for crazy. more than three games. Dude, they so, got some size too. And, and, and they're all giants, like six, seven. We, Dan, we've talked about that. They're all, we've got to have like one of the tallest lines in the league. That's I, a I scary know. line, dude. That's a scary yeah. line. So I'll kind of go, I'll ask this question. What do you think our starting five is? Like who do you, week one, or, or should I say best five? I don't know, best five, starting five, whatever. Well, that, think, that's what they claim is going to play. Yeah. yeah. What do you think our best five across the, across the front is? I think right now Titman McGovern is a push because okay. we just don't know what we have. We don't know in time. Uh, it's, it's a battle. It'll be a battle. Yeah, one of them is center. Uh, AVT right guard. Okay. I think big X factor. I think Makai Becton is our starting right guard week one against the Bills or right tackle against the Bills. Tackle. Yeah. And I think the left side stays the same. Dwayne Brown was hurt the entire year last year. Yeah, man, that dude played through some shoulder bullshit. He's also oh. never played right tackle before, right? Like he's always been no. a left tackle. So yeah. he, if if unless Makai Becton, who is a, a question mark X factor, yeah, unless he straight up beats him, I think Dwayne Brown is going to be the left tackle. I agree. Um, Lincoln, and Lincoln so Thomas I think maybe. that's. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree with you. I want, I, I honestly want to see Tipman again. I don't, I don't know anything. I mean, I've seen some, some of his Wisconsin footage, but like, I want to see him start. I'd want to just give him, let him grow with Rogers. Right. 
Um, yeah. AVT on the right. I think Becton's probably going to end up on the right. I mean, you know, he, he's, he's another one of those social media guys. Like, yeah, just calm it down. I get, I get it. He's young. It's the way that the league is going. Players are going. Um, but I agree, dude. I think that left side's going to be that vet side, right? Like Lincoln yeah. Tomlinson and Dwayne Brown to protect Aaron Rodgers. I mean, they know, they know what they need to do. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say anything too different from you guys. I totally agree. I think the big question mark is I, I am a huge Max Mitchell fan. I am. I mean, yeah. that, that dude was thrown into the fire and he performed oh, and he Max was Mitchell really, did. really good. They were just like, Hey, we know you're a rookie, but just get in there. And we know we didn't start you in the beginning, but just go do your best. And he, he was an above average lineman. Yeah. And um, I think it's going to be a little bit of a battle. I think that he's going to come back strong. I know, you know, he had some health issues with the blood clots. I think it was. Okay. And, yeah. you know, I hope he comes back and he was the athlete that he was because he absolutely deserves that. So um, I think that that dude's going to make a push to try to be, try to be on the line. So hopefully we see him out there, but Again, I'm not a big Becton guy, dude. I'm not. I like what he can no, do yeah, on dude. the field. Obviously, I liked what he did his rookie year. Um, you know, he was he was great. He was great. Can he get back to that? He's losing all this weight. He's obviously working hard. Um, he wants everybody to know how hard he's working. I'll tell you that. Uh, doesn't exactly, um, what's the Before. quote? Like, uh, work hard in silence and let your play be the, uh, the whatever it is. <laughs> I couldn't yeah. finish that. You were, you were going for it. You were spitting. I almost minute, got man. there and the bourbon hit me. Um, so like, he, yeah, he wants everyone to know how hard he's working and how great he looks and how amazing he's going to be. I am a left tackle. He's tweeting to everybody. Yeah. And then, well, you know and what, then dude, if you don't show it this year, if you get hurt or, and look, injuries happen. I'm not going to fault a guy for getting injured, but if you get hurt, or you, you are, you don't play up to the potential that we thought you had, or that you're quoting that you have. I mean, that, that's going to be very frustrating because he is, he's talking a lot. He's doing a lot of talking. So, you know, hopefully he's that guy that we thought he was. I mean, I think he can be. Do we, do we see like a, you know, obviously, you know, we didn't pick up his fifth year option. I want to move out to the tight ends in just a second here, but I want to bring this up real quick. Do we see a, like, a possible, I mean, I think if we were going to trade him, he would have been traded already, right? Like for draft yeah. capital or something like that. But like, is but this, a, is this a, extending an olive branch for him to like, because are, are we going to pay Mekhi Becton, right? Like if he goes out and balls out this year, we're not going to pay him big left tackle money, right? Like, because no, we, we've, we've got Rodgers on the books. We've got Q. Like, is this just to go out there and show what you've got kind of This deal? Like, is a Super Bowl run, Gordon. Yeah, and we have I get all that, of the makings of being a Super Bowl team. We got guys on there last year. We got guys that want to leave after this year. We got guys that like this is it. Yeah. This is yeah. it. This is our time. This right. is our year to make something special happen. Speaking of speaking Gotta of Super do it. Bowls, let's uh let's talk about let's talk about our tight ends. Obviously, Uzama was in one a few years back there, but how are we feeling about this? This is the, honestly the only the only group that's like to me stayed the same, right? We haven't at, we we only added rookie a rookie. We only added yeah. who we got in the draft. So I think we underperformed out of the tight ends last year. I don't think that I don't know if that's on the tight ends as much as it was on MLF or the scheme that we were running. Um, but I mean, you look at Uzami, you look at Conklin, you look at, I mean, I guess even Yaboa or Rucker, like we've got very talented and athletic tight ends. Uzama is yeah. a uh, yards after catch machine. And I don't know, Conklin just, just looks the part, dude, right? The tats, the long hair, the beard. Um, I the feel like he's a better vibe. route runner, the face mask. Oh, he's a better route runner, a little bit crisper. Um, but he's just got to catch. He's got he's got to catch the ball more. Uh, I'm excited to see what Rogers can do with this group. What, what about you guys? I'm excited to see what the plan for the tight ends are. Yeah, I I really even looking back at games from last year, <clears throat> tight we could have not dressed any tight ends and dressed a second tack uh, a third tackle or fourth tackle, yeah. and the game plan would have essentially been the same. Um, so odd. Tight, it, it last year, like, and also we signed Uzama to be kind of our receiving tight end, and 
<clears throat> Conklin to be kind of the road grader, run blocker, and essentially the roles got switched for some reason. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Shout out to Uzama, who just took it in stride and just started beating the hell out of people. Dude's a pro. Dude's a pro's pro, man. Like, I, mean, I love Uzama. He's a gamer. He's yeah. a he's a team player. So, I think we have athletic freaks. Zach Kuntz is. He should not be walking on this planet <laughs> at six seven, three hundred pounds, running a four hundred, uh, like a four five. Right. Like that really shouldn't exist. I'd be Gronk. And, I'd be Gronk. I'm hearing. Yeah, that's that's what they were saying uh, on draft night. Like he played at Old Dominion and a little bit at Penn State, so he didn't get a lot of eyes on him. I guess I don't know, but Dude. I really don't know what to expect with the tight ends. Yeah, I mean you're absolutely right. It's like, what does Nathaniel Hackett do with these dudes? Because we have immense amounts of talent, immense amounts of freak athleticism, and it was underutilized to say the least um, on the field. And like, my main thing this year is throw CJ Uzama the ball. Just throw him mm-hmm. the ball, dude. Every single time the ball was thrown his way, he was making crazy athletic grabs. He was getting open. He's blocking guys coming off his blocks. He's open seven, eight yards down the field almost every single time. Mm -hmm. Zach Wilson, we're not going to get into him. We're not going to talk about that. We'll we'll leave the quarterbacks to the end, Dan. Yeah, but but, I mean, he just couldn't see the field. He couldn't see the field. I mean, they were there. They were open. And um, I think think, just like you said, Brian, keep Conklin on the line to block and send CJ Uzama out there, man. The guy's a borderline wide receiver. So that would be yeah. that would be super fun. We're having both run routes. It doesn't have to yeah, be right. Doesn't, yeah, like, exactly. You can only you can only guard so many people for so long. You know, someone someone's going to get open. Rogers will get rid of the ball. Rogers I, knows how to get rid of the ball quick. He'll find somebody open for six yards every. I feel like we'll time. see. I feel like we'll see a lot of double tight end packages this year. I I mean I hope so. Again with with Conklin and Uzama, I feel like make make the defense choose i mean we're going to go on to wide receivers here in a minute but make the defense choose between Brees hall uzama conklin garrett wilson and lazard or mm-hmm. davis you know what I mean? like make the defense choose that's five dudes who can catch the ball michael carter you know what i mean so like we've got the guys just get them on the field get open and like, historically yeah. rogers loves the tight end loves tight ends like as a jets fan a i should not be able end. to name like four Packers tight ends, but I can. Yeah. Right. He makes them what they are. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That dude loves a big old tight end that's able to get open, yeah. run over people. Yeah. Well, like you said, six yards. If you do six yards three times in a row, you're done. You, 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 that's it. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> Stick a fork in you. You're done. All right. Well, move. Let's move to the wide receivers. Wide receivers, and then in and back. Let's do we it. We were talking a little bit before we jumped on here, and Brian was saying, "Like, man, I, I thought we were actually looking pretty good at wide receiver, and then the whole thing got shaken up, which is absolutely true. I mean, you were looking at Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore and Braxton Bear. I would have been more than happy to bring back those oh. dudes and maybe just add Lazard. You know, to yeah. that mix. even if we got rid of Davis, I would have been like, all right, well, we got Lazard and these other guys and Mims is still sitting, you know, behind the wall, but yeah. it was completely shaken up in one way or the next. You could say that we replaced players with guys that we lost or let go, um, you know, but I, I think the way that I feel right now is Garrett Wilson is your obvious number one. He's going to step into that role. He's going to be the, Dog. he's going to be the target guy, the, the, the double team guy. And then you have a McCole Hardman kind of working out of the slot and an Alan Lazard and a Corey Davis who can kind of go out wide and hopefully win some of those jump balls or those balls down the field. So, man, it's that is an exciting, exciting room right now. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I agree. I mean, I I, I was very happy, but then we added Hardman. We added uh Lazard, we added Cobb, dude. I I thought Davis was gone. I thought all off season he's he's thrown in the package to the Packers. We're gonna mm-hmm. cut him. We're gonna trade him. I'm pretty happy we didn't. I don't. I've I'm wishy washy on Davis, man. My my nickname for him is Corey Drops Davis. He loves to drop a good ball, but last year so many times he came in the clutch. Right, like he was yes. he was the guy that Wilson 
or whoever was at quarterback, you know, and we, we drew so we threw so many, like he was the guy they went to. So I love he's here. He's a solid locker. He was the, guy. he was the third down guy. Like, yeah. you know, Zach Wilson yeah. definitely looked for him on third and seven to be like, please and only not have, catch this. And stared him down. Yes. Yeah. And stared and him down and said, it went like this. <laughs> He probably yelled his name a few times. Corey, Corey, I'm going to you. That's terrible, yeah, dude. dude. How dare yeah. you shame him like that? He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He is. He is. I don't <laughs> think him up. No, I don't care. He can get cut if all I care. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Brian? Where do we stand? Why receiver core? Do you yeah. like where we're at? I mean, like, obviously we have a lot of talent. We don't exactly have a, uh, a Devontae Adams on our team. Maybe we do in Garrett Wilson. Garrett. Wilson, Dan. Yeah, exactly. So maybe we do. We got our own uh, 17 for this year, at least. Yeah. Everyone who bought a Garrett Wilson 17 jersey when he tweeted out next year on five was just like, damn it. That was me. The, yeah. The, well, I you wore can, his you can switch the nameplate very easily. And a lot game. of people did that this year with Rogers I mean, and their more jerseys. Yeah. You yeah. can't um, switch the numbers as easily. The I, this is a classic. And the, I think this is old Jets thinking. I thought we were solid at wide receiver. Do I, did I think Braxton Barrios was a world burner, a game breaker? No, but I thought he could run crisp routes. He wore, wore funny t-shirts, you know. Um, he's absolutely jacked. Like, shout out to team. Braxton Barrios. Absolute <laughs> unit. That was a good gym uh, but... I did Joe Douglas does this or has done this where going into last year's draft, I thought we were pretty good at both running back and cornerback. We could work with uh, Michael Carter um, kind of as the RB one and uh, Brees Hall, Bryce Hall. Um, wh- whichever one is the quarterback. Sorry. Oh yeah. Bryce, Bryce. Sorry. <laughs> Bryce Hall could have been a, a solid QB, uh, CB1, but then we drafted literally two studs. Yeah. It's, I, I, I do think we're getting out of that loser mentality is, yeah. oh, we, we, need to, we need to draft this because this is our weakest spot. Or we could just draft the best football player. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I did not think – um, the wide receiver room was going to get that much better because I thought it was pretty good last year. Core Davis does have his streaks. Gets uh, he was injured as well, um, but he he was. I I don't even want to say weirdly clutch because like you almost expected him to drop three balls in a game and then catch a big catch twenty-one a big, yard yeah, pass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I hate the narrative. And I absolutely hate the narrative that they signed Alan Lazard because they were going after Aaron Rodgers. All right. He is, uh, he's a solid, he's not a number one, but we don't need a number one. Yeah. Garrett Wilson, who multiple people have said, wears a similar number to Devontae Adams. And, uh, you know, Same Aaron Rodgers has thrown a lot of balls to Devontae Adams and said immediately, wow, that, I that like kid's. Yeah, that kid's special. Good. He's special. Um, but I hate the narrative that we signed Alan Lamar to kind of attract Aaron Rodgers. He's a solid wide receiver, two, two and a half, maybe. And for the Jets' identity, even if we, if Zach Wilson played mediocre football last year and we were moving forward with him, I would have been ecstatic with the Alan Lazard signing. He's a great run block. He's one of the best run blockers in the league at wide receiver. And if that's our identity, we need someone who can block downfield. Um, Corey Davis, I I do think, even though his production is sometimes there, sometimes not, I do think he is a good locker room presence. And I another solid run blocking wide receiver, though. You know what I mean? Like so, absolutely. Big body and. Uh, I, I, I think if I, I never have to see another Raxenberry get sweep on third and six, 
ever again. That play will, is gone. Who do who do we think is running those this year? That is play it, is, is it. Miko? Do we think Miko's running those this year? I think if we if that's in Nathaniel Hackett's repertoire, I think McCall Hardman is a much better version yeah. of that. Like you, he was. You will see that play twice. twice. That play is gone. It will never be run. <laughs> that was the Mike Lafleur yeah. special. That dude was just like, what do we do? All right, well, I'm good friends with Braxton Barrios, so I'll just give him I'm a good friend. Okay. Hand it off to like, my friend, my friend Braxton. Mean, do you think he owed Braxton Barrios money? Like, yeah, like he lost a poker game to Braxton Barrios, and the, yeah. and the pot was 15 jet sweeps next year. And then Barrios let, let us down in that Minnesota game. I will say he scored a few touchdowns in some of the sweeps, though. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just a give weird, him a give him it's a yeah, weird give play. Him. I – hey – I still like Braxton Berrios. I do too. I think I, I think he's solid for what he does. Yeah. Um, he was he was completely misused last year. Yeah, At I some know. points, he was wide receiver too. Right. That's not. He that's had a few him. like he had a few like deep balls, just like go routes. Yeah. I, and like Zach Wilson is just throwing up, you know, prayers to get to Braxton Berrios. I was like, what? What was the draw up on that play? You know, like yeah. we're going to literally throw it to a five foot eight dude who's yes, quick, but is, yeah. Yeah. That was tough. Yeah. He wasn't utilized the right way, but yeah, it's a fun wide receiver group. I, I see Garrett Wilson, obviously, like we said, Brian and Gordon as the number one. And then you got Corey Davis and Alan Lazard kind of sharing that number two spot. And then you throw in the Cole Hardman and, you know, Min- Mims, <laughs> I don't, Mims I don't think baby. we have time to get into Mims, but I don't even know where he stands. I think I he's Mims. probably he's probably so frustrated by all the dudes that we brought in that are going to overshadow him. He probably thought this was his year to break out, and maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But man, it's not looking good. the The dirt is is covered over his head right now. But he's, I feel like he's doing it the right way. He yes, he tra- did a trade request. That's that happens. His and trade request. Was- fairly silent though right like his didn't yeah, come out I, until like weeks later i feel no. I mean, like and he's he might be the most underused person i if you would have told me when we drafted him he was a second round pick as well yep he's yep. a second rounder yep. high second rounder at a baylor at a sickum um there it is if if you would have told me three years later that he's one still on the team and two does not have a touchdown and is like not even <laughs> part of our part of does our conversation. Our like, does he does he really not have a touchdown? He has hey, a two he had it that preseason game. Yeah. Remember that he preseason game and then he went like this? Yeah. <laughs> and then they said, Yeah, you're not gonna play for seven games in a row. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do think he was another MLF casualty. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I'm really hoping MLF was just dog shit. And like we I mean, he, was he, young, didn't, play dude. The of, he huh? didn't play the rookie of the year, the first game. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. So we'll, um, we'll see. We'll, oh, um, and you guys are you guys are forgetting one crucial piece that all of Twitter has shit on the Jets for. Signing a wide receiver five. Round of Randall Cobb. You mean you mean yeah. our new wide receiver one, Randall yeah. Cobb? I can't believe we. Aaron Rodgers, our GM. Randall Cobb is going to play. Receiver. Randall Cobb is going to catch twenty passes next year. Yeah, and I hope four of them are touchdowns. Eighty yards, but you know. Yeah, what? yeah, exactly. Everyone's like freaking out about Randall Cobb. The dude yeah. is not going to play. I mean, that's my, that's my opinion. A wide receiver He'll play five, six. Yeah. He's a depth guy. If McCole Hardman gets hurt or someone gets hurt, they're going to have to switch up a little bit of the scheme or whatever it is. He's going to be there and he's solid. He's going to be able to produce. Yeah. He's still got some speed. He's not that old. I think actually him and I are the same age and like, you know, he's going to be good. He's going to be fine. He's not going to be a day one starter. We're going to go with, we, we got to move on to, I don't know how long this podcast is. We got running backs. We only got two position groups left and one of them, I mean, is we don't really need to talk about. We've been yeah. talking about it. All, all the dudes yeah. that we've been talking about are our guys: Garrett Wilson, Corey Davis, Alan Zard, McCole Hardman. Those are the guys you're going to see on the field. You're going to have CJ Uzama and, and Conklin that are trying to catch passes. Though that's your core. Every now and then, you might see Mims in there for a package, or Randall Cobb come out in the slot, or whatever it is. But that's that. 
And dude, that is solid. That is so fun. That is so fun. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember when Jeremy Curley was our wide receiver one? Robbie Anderson I was the do. only guy you could throw uh, it to. Chosen, Dan. Chosen. Chosen. All right, let's move on. Um, I don't want to talk about Chosen Anderson. All right, so this is my most. Ex- I think it has the. This is the group to be the most exciting, right? The running backs. Like, I think we like the most exciting potential. We got Brees Hall coming back, comeback player of the year. Let's hope. Uh, we got Michael Carter. Plus 3, huh? It's plus 3,000. Oh, right yeah. So, yeah. Brees is, Brees is legit like what we wanted Le'Veon Bell to be, right? When we got him. So, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm hoping he comes back, comes back healthy, comes back strong. Michael Carter, uh, we still got. Uh, Bam Knight, right? We let go of Ty Johnson, but we still got Bam Knight, and then we drafted Izzy. So I think we've got some dogs and some ballers uh, carrying the rock. So I'm very excited to see to see what we got there. So the crazy stat is um, Joe Douglas has drafted a running back every time he's drafted, <laughs> and it just shows what he wants this team to be. And like he's drafted good ones, right? Like, yeah, I feel like Michael Carter, right? My, Michael Carter was his first draft, right? Mm-hmm. First or second, yeah, because he had that like, weird one where he was GM, but it was after the was, draft. Gaze was technically like drafting, yeah, know, whatever. Um, we don't, but, we don't say that name. You, it's you like remember Baltimore. the word? You remember the word that Joe Douglas used after he drafted Brees Hall in that one Jets drive? No, playmakers. Yeah, yeah, that mm-hmm. dude loves playmakers. And Izzy is a home run hitter, man. He is like, he is like the yin to the yang to Michael Carter. Michael Carter will yeah. dance. He'll break tackles. He'll make guys miss. You know, he, he's elusive. He can slip through tackles, all this type of stuff. Izzy is going to, he's going to be a one cut runner. He's going to outrun dudes. You know, I think that he is also, he's versatile. He can do some of those other things, maybe not as well as like a Bam Knight or a Michael Carter, but <clears throat> He is going to be, he's almost like a miniature Brees Hall, if like that yeah. makes sense. Like he's going to yeah. be able to kind of hit, do that one cut and move, dude. And and we're going to need that in the beginning of the year because we're not going to see, I just don't think we're going to see Brees Hall in the beginning of the year like we did. I mean, he's, gonna, he's probably going to take some time to get back. Yeah, you can't, you, you know. can't run that guy out there for 26 carries a game. So you're going to have to have a little bit of a, of a mesh. It's a, of a, you know, a, a versatile running back group that is able to kind of all come together and produce. And you're going to be able to do that because of the guy that you have snapping the ball, because we're going to be able to throw the ball. So it's not going to have to be all running backs. Like it was when Zach Wilson was there, when Brees Hall gets hurt, well, now you're going to lose all your games. The fact that Brees Hall had the season he did with nine in the box. Yeah. Every play. Yeah. Like I, I agree. He's, he's going to have, a slower start he has to he just doesn't have the wheels under him right now but i think um i wa- i watched a, a, a video of buffalo jets fan breaking down uh super athletic running backs under the age of 27 coming off of a early season acl tear saw that yeah and, yeah a shout out buffalo jets fan um the, the stats were like by like week nine, they're producing like 80% of what they were producing the previous season. Something something to that. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, um, but 80% of what he was producing, if, if we hit our bye week and then maybe even that Black Friday game and Brees Hall is 80% of the running back he was, plus all the new weapons. Yeah still going to be carrying like 4.2 per carry or something yeah for sure yeah dude i'm 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 pumped again i agree i think i i think if our if coaching staff is smart they'll you know slow mm-hmm. uh slow release him back in um but again i love the pick of izzy i i agree i think he's like a mini yeah. mini Brees hall so that's kind of maybe where they were thinking like look at you know this is what we got out of Brees. this kid looks looks like a stud a playmaker let's let's pick him up i think he was what a fifth round pick fourth yeah fourth fifth round pick so it's like i'm i'm the, the tackle about we drafted was fourth that's right then, that's uh, right yeah because we we drafted him from pit and then got him back in the fifth so and joe douglas actually apparently called him back after we drafted what, what do you think about his name? 
what's the tackle's name? Carter Warren. Co yeah, Carter Warren. And he apparently, he was like, if we take Izzy right now, what do you, what do you think? And he said, you got a dog. I love it, dude. I'm, I'm pumped. So. Yeah, it's going to be exciting, man. Like you said, we're going to, we're going to see kind of a, you know, a makeshift Brees Hall in the beginning of the year, man. But I think when it matters, the last six, seven games, that's where you're going to see the best, the, the, the best Brees Hall. And that's where you're going to see, we're going to be, we're going to need it. You know, yep. we're going to need yeah. it. Our, our schedule in the beginning of the year is not easy and mm -hmm. we're going to need, you know, our top playmakers to perform those last five, six games. And I think he's going to start hitting his stride then. So yeah, can't wait for that. I just hope uh, Michael Carter's not forgotten. You know, he's a, he's a fun dude I agree. in the backfield. He's a good locker room guy. Um, got a great personality. Hopefully he's able to perform because he was playing injured last year, man. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of factors. Yeah. There was yeah. some thing I went actually today and I got suggested on YouTube. It was like Michael Carter's rookie season highlights. And I was like, man, that's not who we saw this year. Kid was dirty, man. S slippery. Like, yeah. And quick. He didn't get mm -hmm. taken down until the third or fourth guy got to him like that. Yeah. And like, yeah. that's wild in the NFL to see like that, like you're, you're gut running through people. You got, you're making people miss that. Well, like, yeah, I, I want, I want to see Michael Carter back to back to full strength. So. For sure. All right. Let's finish it up with Aaron. I mean, that's it. Right. Like we're done. Right. Like that's uh wait, that, wait, I, I know we all want to talk about Aaron Rodgers. I think I think it's safe to say we upgraded at quarterback. Yeah. Dan, would you agree we upgraded at quarterback? I think we did. All right. The most underrated signing, and I'm not this is not uh hyperbole. The most underrated signing is getting rid of Braden Mann. And oh, recent signing Thomas Morstead. We Thomas didn't Morstead talk about punters and kickers. Great. Yo. Yes. Punters are people too. Thank you for bringing that up. Pat McAfee would love you for saying that. Yeah. Um, Braden yes, Mann dude, I agree. was absolute dog shit. He was, he was he, pretty, pretty bad. bad. Pretty bad. He shanked so many balls or would hit a line drive way past his gunners and, uh, I don't know, lose a rivalry game to the Patriots in overtime. <laughs> So, dude, dude Morstead, Morstead was on one of the Jets YouTubers' uh, channels, uh, like uh, Boy Green or something like that. Jets Boy yeah. Green, yeah, or whatever yeah. his name is, and that guy actually, that guy pulls some like legitimate. Boy players. Green gets some legit. He interviews. has like he has like two thousand followers, and he gets like he was, Lake well, Tomlinson to come on. He was I'm also like, on that. Uh, he was also on that like one Jets drive, like uh, Jets. Yes, yeah. he was a part of that. He's very active. I, on I messaged him and I was like, dude, I don't understand why you don't have mo more followers. He was like, yeah, me neither. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> I was like, you make like two videos a day. You have some of the biggest, you have literally Jets players coming on your podcast to talk about the season and you like, no one follows yeah. you. He was like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because he's a little like, he's a little quirky, I guess. I don't know what it is. But uh, Thomas Morstead yeah. went on that, went on his podcast and he, he had a great interview, man. He was like, I'm fired up. He was like, yes, I might not have the leg I had when I was 26, but he was like, Man, I'm gonna. He was like, I, I am so excited for this year. This Jets team, you know, took me in, and he was like, I, I'm ready to to perform. So that is gonna be a huge upgrade. Like, I mean, said. he was yeah. great when we do because we had him. Did we have him last year and cut him? What did we do? When we did just didn't. It was a one year deal, I think. Yeah. And we just didn't resign. Someone else took him, and we said, okay. Yeah, uh, the Miami Dolphins took him. Yeah, yeah, the Dolphins. Sorry, my light, my light uh, turned off there. Rookie move. Um, but yeah, dude, I, I love bringing Morstead back. I love that we got Greg the leg. Hopefully we don't see Morstead on the field too much, right? Like we're going to, we're, we're going to talk about the quarterback in just a minute, hopefully that helps, but like, yeah, hopefully we don't we see him. Like, he can place the ball. We're, we're getting deep down the field. He can place the ball. He doesn't need a, mm -hmm. we don't need 70 yard punts. Like, I mean, we no. could sometimes I'm sure, but. Yeah, love. Thank you for bringing it up. We can't believe we forgot about the kicking group. Yeah, dude, we that really what we did didn't talk about our field goal kicker either. Did we? Zerline, dude, Greg the leg. Yeah, re-signing re Greg the leg, solid move. Very I solid. When you when you texted us this morning uh, about like what we were going to be talking about, I literally wrote down one note. <laughs> Braden man sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you came through. You, yeah. <laughs> the message you is clear. The class, yeah. You, you were looking at your notes. You were looking at your notes. Uh, yeah. All right. So Aaron Rodgers, man, we bring him in. We we get it done. It was it was a question mark of whether or not we're going to be able to do it. And 
I think at the end of the day, there was, I think that's something that no one is ever going to truly know. I think that it was known that Aaron Rodgers was coming to the Jets well, well before anybody else knew, obviously. I think because Joe Douglas, he had a plan. You weren't going to roll out this season with Zach Wilson. No. no. And you weren't going to allow uh, Aaron Rodgers to fall through your fingertips. And then you're just kind of just saying, who do you draft? Uh, I mean, I mean, who do you pick up? Are you going to go with a Ryan Tannehill? Or are you going to go with like a Teddy Bridgewater? Like who do you bring in? So I think Aaron Rodgers was dead set on the Jets. I think Rodgers made that very known early on. I know he said that it took him coming out of his darkness retreat in order to kind of realize that. Um, And, you know, whether that's true or not, whatever. But uh, I think that we were able to, we got our guy. Woody Johnson was going to pay anything. He would have bankrupted Johnson and Johnson for, uh, for Aaron. And we got our guy. He he took his vaccine out of the U S for him. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. we don't don't need to go there. It was just funny. Let's not go there. But Aaron Rodgers is our guy. I still pinch myself in saying Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback of the New York Jets. I'm dreaming. Man, what that guy is a winner. He doesn't lose. And now he has one of the – and I'm going to go out on a limb and say he might have the most talented defense he's ever seen before and maybe the best wide receiver core short of a Jordy Nelson, uh, Devontae Adams combo. But we'll see what happens, man. This is going to be special. I would, I would agree on the defense. I think he's probably got the best defense he's ever had on the opposite side of the ball um, or, or up there. Right. I mean, let's again, not to discredit the Packers, but they had some stout defenses in the day, but I, right now I feel like we got a young hungry defense and I don't know about wide receivers. I mean, Devonte Adams, Jordy Nelson combo was pretty dirty. Um, but again, yeah. I think that's, we've how got win, that, that's how you win a Super Bowl. <laughs> we've got that potential, right? Like we've, we've got Garrett Wilson, I think it depends on how our secondary wide receivers step up this year and, and how he makes them look. Right. I mean, but I mean, we're still dreaming about it. Like Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback of the New York football. God damn this light. It's okay. I'm just going dark the rest of the way, guys. We're going no, dark. Like it. it's, this um, it's unbelievable. Honestly, <laughs> it's like looking at our schedule. Yeah. We have a, t- a bunch of tough games. I personally don't get the schedule release hype. Like we knew who we were playing, where we were playing. Yeah, we yeah, knew. Everyone's like, it's such a tough schedule. I'm like, we knew who our opponents were. Yeah. I, <laughs> I guess our first four weeks are a rough stretch. I get, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. knew who they, like to quote the, the great poet, Michael, Michael Clemens, Whoever wants that smoke. Whoever wants the smoke. Um, um, we are the dragon. We are the dragon. We are the dragon. Yeah. He's gonna he I love Aaron Rodgers. I've I've loved him for a while. He is a weird dude, and I'm all for it. I love it. He was I'm in Game of Thrones. I don't think I knew that. I don't think I knew he was yeah. in Game of Thrones as an extra. So he loves it. Dude, I agree. Yeah, he, well, he was in Game of Thrones only if you believe the last season exists. Yeah, that's that's Which, true. He's an out there dude, but God damn, he can throw the ball. <laughs> and, and, and I don't, I don't think he's, he's one and done. Right. I think we're going to see two to three years of Aaron Rodgers, And if we mm-hmm. don't win the Super Bowl this year, I we're winning one with Aaron. Rodgers. I, I think it depends. I think it depends on how we do. If we win seven games and he feels that guys kind of gave up or it's not the team for him. I don't think, I know I don't, I think that's like a 3% chance of happening, yeah. but if the jets, like, let's say, I'm just going to, I'm not even going to talk about super bowl. Let's say we make the AFC championship game or something like that. And we don't make the super bowl. I think he's definitely back to run it again. Yeah. I, I think every single game is winnable with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. I agree. So he, he doesn't turn the ball over his Worst season last year with a broken thumb on his throwing hand would have been a top three Jets season of all time. Yeah. Like, I we've, we've never I had a quarterback. We've never had a quarterback, literally, uh, other than Joe Willie. We had a few I inklings. Mean, we, we had Chad only, Pennington for one year. We no, had no, no, but those aren't those year. aren't quarterbacks, dude. We had Sanchez. We went to the AFC championship game two times. 
Yeah, just we, had the best, we had the Despite best defense. Teams. We had the best defense in the NFL, and yeah, we did. one of the best. And, and running backs galore with Bilal Powell, and everybody was running people over. Thomas and Jones. wasn't that Thomas Jones that I think back? It was Thomas yeah. Jones. Well, that yeah. might have been uh, Leon Washington. Leon Washington and Thomas. Leon Jones. Washington and Thomas Jones. That sounds right. God, what a one-two punch that was. Yeah, <laughs> like we have literally in my lifetime never had a quarterback where I'm just like, I can't wait to see him throw the ball. Right. I agree with that. Chad yeah. Pennington, yes, he was accurate. He was good. He could win games. The guy threw up little kind of rainbows, you know, like just yeah. touch passes. He wasn't yeah. throwing 65-yard bombs. And I'm not saying Aaron Rodgers is going to do that either. He has the arm for it. But, dude, he is just a spectacle. Every single time he steps on the field, you want to see him throw the ball. And you can, and now you you add a Brees Hall to the mix. That's scary, man. That's, yeah. that's scary. Do you guys find yourself watching the Jets – like five second clips of him just spinning it in slow motion. Yeah, I, I love those times clips. I love I've those Twitter it. clips. My God, like, like it could be uh, him throwing the ball to like a fourteen year old, and I'd be like, and then you get all the screenshots of just people like <laughs> in the background. Yeah, like all right. Poor Jeremy Ruckert. He's in the he's in the wrong spot and should become friends with this media person because he is consistently in the background <laughs> watching Aaron Rodgers like yeah. he's fourteen. Like, yeah, yeah. Little, I love little, it, man. little little tidbits about the schedule to get you a little excited. I think I saw a few things. One, like yeah, those first four four games against the Bills, uh, Kansas City, Philadelphia, right? Like. We're playing all these tough teams early, but they're also getting new offensive coordinators, right? The enemy, mm-hmm. I, I, obviously, everything runs Philly through. Philly lost both their coordinators, too. Yeah, yep. Philly lost both their coordinators. Everything runs through Andy Reid, but again, don't want to discredit the job that the enemy did at Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Um, Buffalo, did they lose an offensive coordinator? Uh, I think Buffalo's solid. Buffalo's still, still back. So, but that, we've got that to look ahead to. We also don't leave the state of New York until or more than four times until week 15. We have 10 games. We go to Dallas. We Met go Lincoln. to Denver. We go to Vegas. So that's it. Those are the only three times we leave the state of New York. Uh, we are plus- traveled to Buffalo. Yeah, we play Giants when we're the, technically the away team. Yeah, we but, have 10 yeah. games at home. Yeah, it's unreal. And then I think we had, like, I saw something the other day I was reading. Like, we have no like short games right like we all like no like um like even our monday night games like there we we have a we have a lengthy time or something like that like we have a very favorable schedule for the number of primetime games we have so i think the stat you're talking about is like rest differential that's it yeah and, yeah, yeah yeah and it, i something like we have like a plus 12 rest differential mind you a stat i have never heard of before this week no. But I would much rather have plus 12 than whatever the Seahawks have yeah, at like take it. minus eight. Yeah. Like yeah. that seems like it sucks. Bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's end it with this. You want Tim Boyle or Zach Wilson at number two? Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson. I I I'm still a Zach Well, I'm not a Zach Wilson truther. I like Zach Wilson. I think we have done the best thing for Zach Wilson, right? Like we've, we've got his idol. We got the guy he emulated his game around. One of the Mm -hmm. reasons we liked Zach Wilson so much is because we felt like he could throw from any position. So give him a guy to sit behind and tee and learn from for the next two years, cross your fingers. He turns into, you know, Aaron Rodgers' disciple. You know what I mean? So yeah. Did we already do the damage to him? Maybe he's, he's been through hell and back. Maybe. It's not been an easy two years for Zach Wilson. No, no. it's pretty much it's, been uh, honestly almost as bad as you could draw it up. I mean, injuries, ridicule, mm-hmm. losing, complete mind games. His mom's doing weird stuff. Like, it oh, just, his mom's a, a mom's loose a, cannon. Mom's yeah, I mean, little, she is. A she's a little bit of a nut. So, like, almost it's kind of like I don't know if I could have like before his career if I could have been like, what could go wrong. Well, he could lose almost every game. He could stink. He could not make the short passes. He could uh, lo- he could lose the locker room. He could become a spoiled brat. Like every little thing that you could think could go wrong in his career, it's right. pretty much happened. So the yeah. the best thing the Jets are doing for Zach Wilson 
is is pretending he doesn't exist and that's what people need to do forget yeah. about him he, he cannot be a headline pretend he's not even on the team so that when he comes back it's kind of like oh all right well let's see what he's got instead of like remember the yeah. piece of crap that he was so um, and the other great thing about, uh, about Rogers is he stays healthy, you know, and even when he's hurt, he plays through it. So, um, hopefully we don't have to see a yeah. Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, QB competition. Strebler? Chris Strebler too. Dude's yeah, an I athlete. I love him. I think Strebler's God, I love him. I think Boyle's probably going to be our practice squad guy. I don't know. Maybe we carry three again this year. Maybe Strebler's practice squad. I don't know, but. Strebler should honestly go to the XFL. He'd be good. That's a didn't that's he come out of some league, league like that? He I think he came out, out, of, the came out of the CFL. I think he came out of CFL or the, or, oh, the yeah. U, or the USFL, one of those two, or the original, the, or the second iteration of the XFL, not the third one. <laughs> yeah, the one I don't, before. Know. I don't know where he's from. <laughs> the COVID one. That's right. All right, man. Well, yeah, we'll wrap it up there, dude. Brian, thank you so much for coming thank on. You for that was a blast. This was an I know. absolute blast. That was a long. My one. wife Whoa. is a Cowboys fan, so I just end up talking to myself a lot of the time. My Ooh. wife's a Cowboys fan too, so we, at we least got you're from Brooklyn, common. brother, where you can stand in line and have a bagel and talk to somebody about the Jets. Gordon and I are down yeah. here, and we're in no man's land talking to ourselves or our wives about the Jets, and it's a freaking mess. That's what created Jets therapy. We're like, we got to talk to somebody. Might as well talk to each other. Yeah, that's right. Um, it we we definitely got to have you back on, man. It'd be fun to have you back on, maybe for the prediction video for the upcoming season. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Um, but we'll go yeah, from there. I'm, I'm down. Whenever whenever you call, I'll be around. All right, for sure. All we'll right, put up man. the signal, the bat signal. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching another session of Jets Therapy. We'll see you next time. Well, we will be breaking down the upcoming season, going through wins and losses, and uh, hopefully have more than seven this year. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. <laughs>